Hi, it is early January here in Northern Arizona and I know there are a lot of parents like me who have kids in college and a lot of college students right now who are thinking about back to school. Now, I uh, live in Arizona so I've just done a little bit of research because I have a freshman myself and I know about the three Arizona college towns because I've gone to two of them and my daughter is now going to one of them so I did a little thinking myself and I know other parents are thinking that if the universities open up in the fall should I buy or should I have my child buy a dorm a townhouse a home in the college town where they're going to move to and be living for the next few years while they go to college and get their degree at a university. So I've been thinking that as well. So I've done a little bit of research and I've come up with 10 things that you need to think about if you're considering buying a property for your child to live in while they're off to college. So number one, this is the very first thing you need to find out. And is that, um, that is, will your child be able to make the purchase themselves or will they need you or their other parent or somebody close to them to be a co-borrower, co-purchaser. And of course the way you find that out is you get in touch with your favorite loan officer and if you don't have one I can certainly put you in touch with one. Um, but you'll need to find out if the child has a job, is that enough to qualify them. Um, there are requirements in place now that could change so um, most lenders want a young person to have two years job history which could be a problem if they are only 18 and they're a freshman. Also six months credit history or they have no FICO store score. So if your kid doesn't have that it would be good to get a credit card for them right now and then just have them charge up a little bit each month and pay it off entirely for six months. So now if you've determined that you were uh, making a purchase together that changes the dy dynamic a little bit but that's the first thing you're going to want to know. Number two is how long do you expect your college student to live in that college town and to go to university. So for example in the 1990s I went to Northern Arizona for my master's degree. So master's degree typically shorter duration. I was there for less than two years. So two years might not have made it um, worthwhile to purchase a, uh, a property close to NAU and Flagstaff. I ended up living in Mormon Lake at the time, but um, two years might not be worth it. But say you're going for an entire bachelor's degree or your kid might go to graduate school. My daughter's considering medical school, so that could put her there seven or eight years makes it more likely to be worth it than if it's only two years, say. Number three is what is the price of a dorm in that college town? So I know the four, I'm sorry, I know the three universities in Arizona are priced similarly. In the past, SU and U of A were same tuition and NAU was slightly more. I'm not sure what that is now, but I know dorm for my daughter would be $7,000 a year. So this is what you're comparing it to. So one of the places I looked like, I did a little bit of number crunching and it looked like the mortgage for her would be, you know, about a thousand a month. And that includes, um, everything that includes the HOA, that includes the mortgage insurance. So 10,000, so it would be now 12,000 a year for her to live in a condo near the campus versus 7,000 to be in the dorm. So $5,000 difference, um, that's just another thing that you need to think about. Now, what is the price? Number four, what is the price of property near in, near campus in that college town. And I know in Arizona, the three universities, there's a huge difference. So I did a little research over the weekend. I uh, was looking at two bedroom, two bath condo townhouses near the three universities. And this is what I found right now. Of course, it's January, inventory is low. But in Tucson near U of A, you might pick up a two bedroom, two bath condo for a hundred and Forty thousand dollar ish, with maybe a hundred and fifty ish HOA fee. Same type condo in Tempe near ASU would be one hundred and eighty five thousand dollars. But now you're going to have a higher HOA fee from what I looked at, closer to three hundred a month, two hundred fifty three hundred a month to be in Tempe near the ASU campus. And then finally, you go to 
Northern Arizona University, where there's the least amount of inventory um, to be near NAU. I did see one condo in about that size range for a hundred, no, two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars. It did have a low HOA fee of like a hundred and forty a month, but actually it was only a two bath, one bedroom, one loft, and it was way across town. So again, same size condo, um, much much more expensive in northern arizona country versus say u of a so that's another thing for you to think about do your research there now number five is what is the market market <laughs> the local real estate market forecast to do in that college town now you do want to consider the national forecast but don't get bogged down about that uh, real estate is hyper local so say you're looking in Tucson or you're looking in Tempe, Google, what is the market forecast for Tempe, Arizona? Or just go to Zillow. There are places there where they have statistics and market research that give you a forecast over the next five years. Is the market going to tank and you're going to be stuck with the place? Uh, again, the forecast isn't going to tell you 100%, but it's going to make you feel a lot better in the end. Number six is can your son or daughter make the mortgage payment on their own, on their part-time college job, or are you going to be paying for that? Again, maybe it doesn't make a difference, but you want to make sure that your child doesn't have to work so many hours to cover that payment that they don't do well in school, or it takes them an extra year to finish school. So that's one thing to think about. And then number seven is can your child get a roommate and then collect half of the payment from your their roommate? And so I was looking at two bed, two bed condos, thinking if the mortgage is a thousand a month and they can get five hundred from a roommate, you know, that makes the deal much more attractive. Uh, number eight, I think this is very important to know is what kind of rent could you get for that condo or that house right now? If say, oh, you bought it, kid decided I'm not going to school there. <laughs> what rent could you get for it? And so I looked at my favorite website, and I know there are more, but there's rentometer.com. You go in there, you put in, you know, two bedroom, two bath condo at this address, in this zip code, and it comes out and it does an analysis and says you can get an average rate of and the one I looked at said nine hundred and seventy eight dollars and I was um, my number crunching said the mortgage payment would be about the same so so that's a good thing um, see if you have enough rent to cover the mortgage and then this is kind of needed for number nine which number nine says say when your child graduates college in five years and they move out of town and you've got this unit say the the industry is tanked real estate is tanked and you can't sell it for nearly what you paid for it so you want to hold on to it will you get enough rent in that case to pay for your mortgage now likely rent is going to be stable over the next five or six years because people always need a place to live so i don't see rents dropping but it's possible home prices could drop so would that happen would you be able to uh, 978 a month say maybe a slight increase so maybe now it's a thousand twenty five you get are you going to be able to keep the unit and, and not be destroyed financially and then number 10 my number 10 thing you need to think about before you buy your kid a condo in the college town is the wild card is what is going to happen to on-campus learning after COVID goes away. So say the universities are so excited and your kid loves online learning so much that they're like, nah, I'm not moving a Flagstaff. I just want to learn in my parents' basement. And will universities go to an online, you know, almost exclusively online learning model? And if that would happen, then your, <laughs> your condo might not only depreciate greatly but now you might not even be able to collect rent money because nobody's going to live uh you know in tempe or tucson or flagstaff they love it now nobody can answer that question i don't think and you can pontificate all you want there are a couple of things that i think uh, just as a mom and just as a former college student is the in-person experience is so much better for not only your kids just having a good time, but just for their ability to learn that if universities have 
uh, their number one goal being success rate right, of their students, I would think they'd want to parents to let their kids come and do um, um, in-person learning. And another thing is if you're getting a degree in something difficult like science, engineering, um, that kind of thing, medical, really it's a lot easier to learn in person or at least I'm going to give you my example. Uh, when I was young, I took computer classes a lot. My master's had a CIS emphasis, and so we would be in the lab doing assignments. There'd be 10, 12 other kids, a couple of TAs. You get stuck, you raise your hand, and someone eventually can fix the issue. But if you're, when I went to University of Phoenix, say, to enhance my or to refresh my uh, programming skills, it was way more difficult because you're isolated it's harder to to troubleshoot with people online. People online really don't want to. And I would see you know, class would start out, and by the end, maybe two thirds of the class would have dropped just because they couldn't do it and they weren't getting help. So again, that's your wild card. I'm curious what you think. Um, I live in Arizona, so I can sell real estate anywhere in the state, but typically I work in Sedona, Verde Valley, Flagstaff, but now I have a small home in Chandler, so I also sell in the East Valley towns like Tempe, Gilbert, Chandler, Ahwatukee. If you have a real estate question, uh, feel free to send me a text, a phone call, or an email. My contact information is down below. I post videos every single week, so if you like this topic, please give me a thumbs up, and I hope to see you back here again next week.